So YouTube team, keep it clean. Last but certainly not least, in the press conferences from this week, we had one Ravens general manager, Eric DaCosta, who spoke to the media today. And he started it off by thanking literally everybody from top to bottom within the organization. And my favorite was that he even thanked people outside the organization, specifically people who cover the Ravens and provide a different aspect to the fans of the Ravens. And I really appreciated that. So Eric, thank you. Thank you. But from the jump, you know the question, the, the biggest question, well, in my eyes, going into this press conference that somebody needed to ask Eric DaCosta was about one Lamar Jackson, about Lamar Jackson's contract status, where they at, because of course we've heard the rumors and stuff about Lamar turning down a contract offer from the Ravens, and not, that's not a bad thing. That's how negotiations work. It happens. You don't take the first offer. You learn that from Michael Scott from the office. But anyway... Um, we heard so much about it, but we wanted to hear directly from somebody who would be in charge of these contract talks, that being Eric DaCosta. And let's look at what he had to say. So um, he said that it's an unusual negotiation because uh, he's been dealing with a player and obviously instead of an agent. Um, he said that he won't talk about specifics, but that him and Lamar have had five to six conversations over the last year. So what that led me to believe because obviously he's talking about Lamar and his contract. That leads me to believe that they, they have been going back and forth on this thing. That is not necessarily news. That is not anything new. That is not breaking or anything like that. They've talked about that. They, they, they've talked to Eric DaCosta has come out and said that before. So that's the expectation. So that means that, hey, they're trying. They're trying. Both parties are trying. They're working on stuff. Um, and he said that they are, they're working at Lamar's pace. That's where things kind of took a little turn when he said that. I said, ooh, okay now. And he said he feels like we have a lot of unfinished business. And he said that about Lamar. Uh, he and I share that same vision. Lamar knows he can call slash text me at any point. We will operate based on his urgency. Right now, we want to see Lamar get healthy. We have a lot to work on as a team, especially on offense. So, whoo Eric DaCosta publicly let it be known like, hey, Lamar, big dog. It's on you. It's on you. It's on you. And that allows uh, the perception right now of where the Ravens are at when it comes to the contract that the ball is in Lamar Jackson's court. And when Lamar Jackson wants to make this thing happen, hey, he can make it happen. Now, something to keep in mind. This could also be a negotiation tactic. Get, put a little pressure on Lamar from the organization, from the fan base and whatnot, from outsiders looking in like, hey, Ravens are trying, Lamar. What's up with that? But, hey, you never know. You never know. So, uh, L Lamar, like we talked about before, Lamar does have plenty of leverage um, as to what happens with this whole thing um, and whether he signs or not. Now, when Eric DaCosta spoke about um, that Lamar feels like the Ravens, him and the Ravens have some unfinished business. Uh, to me, that sounded like Lamar really wants to let this thing play out. That's what it sounded like to me. And I know to a lot of y'all, you have been in the comment section saying a lot of the same thing. Uh, that you wouldn't expect Lamar to re-sign right here, right now, because you want to see what the Ravens do for him. You want to see what he does for the Ravens as well. It goes both ways. So, and of course, we know everything that he's done for the Ravens already. Uh, but you just want to see how this thing goes and if they really build that offensive lineup like we'll talk about in a little bit. But again, with Lamar, with, with this, with this press conference, it really sounds like Lamar's like, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Let, let, let's wait on it. But anyway, that was very um, interesting. Now back to Eric DaCosta. Um, he also talked about when they were in the Caribbean and Bahamas that they talked about some possible contracts and free agency and deals and stuff. He said he, he brought up the whole right player, right price thing. You know, that's the Ravens motto. Uh, and he said they're excited about having nine picks in the first four rounds. And all of those picks should be uh, within their uh, top 80 players. So, of course, they got the draft board with their top guys. So he said that all of those picks that they got right now, they should be able to get uh, a lot of those guys. Um, and, and throughout this press conference, he was throwing some hints about the draft and about moving around and possibly moving back. And we'll talk about it, though. Um, now, back to Lamar Jackson again. Uh, he talked about 
Uh, somebody asked if his mom is still repping him and the fact that he endorsed Antonio Brown. How does Eric DaCosta feel about that? Eric DaCosta said he hasn't seen anything from Antonio Brown on social media. Really? I, I, didn't, I didn't believe that at all. I'm sure, because I know, because you know Lacey DaCosta, you know she on Twitter. I know, you know she's on scene. Everything. You know Lacey got to be so tired of so many Ravens fans. She like, oh. I'm sure there have been so many times where she wanted to just press deactivate because she probably tired of hearing it, probably getting tired of getting tagged and people being like, hey, Lacey, uh, tell Eric to do this. Because it's like, <laughs> I don't know why people do that. Anyway, um, <laughs> he said that he's spoken to Lamar Jackson uh, and he said he actually got anxiety uh, when it came to dealing with the players from day to day since he's a lot different from Ozzie Newsom. Ozzie Newsom uh, haven't been a player and whatnot, but Eric DeCosta said it's, it's all about just talking to people. Now, as far as Antonio Brown, he said they're comfortable where they are at wide receiver. And something else that we'll talk a little bit about, again, remember last year? Remember last year when Eric DeCosta was also comfortable with what they had at wide receiver and he was actually insulted? Y'all, I know y'all remember that. And what he turned around and do, drafted not only Rashad Bateman, but drafted Tylen Wallace as well. So he took not one, but two wide receivers after being insulted of the Ravens and the media saying, asking him about wide receivers. But this year he said they're comfortable where they at. So I would expect them to sign a veteran. Not an old crazy price veteran, anything like that, but I would expect them to. But we'll see. Um, he also talked about. Uh, that he anticipates picking up Hollywood's fifth-year option. So shout out to Holly. We'll talk about that uh, in more detail a little later on. Um, now, he, he was asked about the Bengals and how they've been having all this success and going into this offseason, how they have over $56 million in cap space. <laughs> so they already are a not even a good team, but a great team. They're in the Super Bowl. And I know a lot of Ravens fans don't like hearing that. Oh, why would you call the Bengals great? They're in the Super Bowl. And yeah, you could talk about that cakewalk of a schedule that they had, their, their last place schedule, but they beat the Raiders. And they're like, oh, okay. Then they beat the number one seed, the Titans. And they're like, oh, okay. Then they beat the Chiefs. And they beat the Chiefs twice in a month. So you got to give them that credit. Uh, but anyway, uh, he's Eric DeCosta said, we look at all the best teams and have to figure out how to beat them. Said things are always evolving and changing. And yes, that's certainly true. Now, this, is, this was a really good question here about Ronnie Stanley. Um, they asked, how does Ronnie Stanley and his, him coming back, how does that impact what you do? Um, he said it, that he thought about it a lot, said it was his, his mistake, expecting that Ronnie Stanley would be back at full strength. And I appreciated that so much. I really did. I, I, I really appreciated how he owned up to that. Um, because that, it being his mistake that he thought Ronnie Stanley was going to be back at 100, his mistake for really not addressing it like he probably should have addressed it. But anyway, let's keep going. He said that that was a big setback. Oh, yeah, it certainly was. Uh, he said he can't comment on Ronnie's rehab at this point. Said he's optimistic, though. But the way that he said it, he didn't sound like he has a lot of confidence in Ronnie Stanley coming back at full strength this year. Or it just didn't really sound like he was. He said he was optimistic, but he did not sound optimistic. Something that I've been saying this offseason, Ronnie Stanley right now, as sad as it sounds, Ronnie Stanley is a bonus. Getting him back is a bonus. It, we want it to happen. We hope it happens. But it's a bonus. And I feel like Ravens have to treat it as such. Um, and he said as far as one of the em emphasis, the points of emphasis is the offensive line. And he said that happens through the draft and also with guys that they have already. He said for us to be the best offense we can be, they have to have a strong offensive line. Oh, yeah. You're right about that one, EDC. Uh, somebody else asked him, how much harder is it to assess where you are heading into next season with all these injuries you had? Uh, he, he said they have a process, a challenging process, but a process. Um, he brought up Gus, JK, and Justice Hill. He said, we're in a situation where it's when do they come back? Um, he said situations like this, they complicate things, but you got to trust your medical team. You also have to be flexible enough to look for players that can help the team at any positions. You don't want to be content at a position. Uh, he said they're always looking at value and talent. One of his regrets this year was when the salary cap went down, that that hurt their ability to be flexible during the season. And he said with all the injuries, it put a hit on the cap and said that they had opportunities this year to pull the trigger on some trades. But he said that, do you mortgage the future to make a short-term trade? Y'all know my answer, but I'm greedy. So, but I ain't no GM. <laughs> 
anyway, he said the idea of taking on dead money each year isn't an ideal situation. And he said, I don't want that to be us. And he said they try to do responsible deals for the team and for the players. Um, so that that was interesting. And of course, we, we know there's uh, we, we hear the stories every year about all these almost deals that went down, all these almost trades that got pulled off. But the Ravens just come, came up short. Um, so and, and I, I appreciated that he did address that. He spoke on that. Um, now, earlier in the presser, he had mentioned how the Ravens are a running team. And somebody asked, well, what does we're a running team mean? And he said it means that they're a physical team. Said he likes the idea of always keeping the other team guessing. Uh, being able to push people off the ball is a good thing. Keeping other teams off balance is what you aspire for every play. You know what's funny, though? When he spoke about the offense, um, well, no, yeah, I guess it, it is more of a Harbaugh thing. Because um, Harbaugh, he said it the other day, he makes the decisions on the coordinators and the staff and all that. But yeah, nobody asked him about any coordinators at all. Not not one question about the coordinators. Maybe they got like a little cheat sheet before the presser that said, no questions about you. We don't talk up. You already know. Anyway, um, he said, how much change will there be on the offensive line? Uh, this is where Eric DaCosta started playing the games, them, them draft games, them trade games. He said, if the right player becomes available, uh, we'll make a move. If a guy is there at 14, we'll take him. If we can trade back at 20, we'll take him. And he just started naming all these different scenarios where they could get a player. And he said they just look to get someone that fits. But when he said that, if they're available at 14, okay. If they're available at 20, like, and he and he said he mentioned picking at twenty again. He mentioned picking from fourteen to twenty again. He's like, oh yeah, there you go, putting it out there to these other GMs. Like, hey, if y'all want to make a trade, y'all want to trade up to fourteen, talk to me, cause you know I love me some draft picks. Now, something that I feel like the Ravens need to do this year and really moving forward, quality over quantity. Quality over quantity. Having a million draft picks, hey, that's great, but. Let's do quality over quantity. But anyway, moving forward. Um, somebody asked if, uh, I think it was Jeff Zerbic, but if somebody asked, if, has anything happened with Lamar over the last four months that impacted where you guys stand as far as contract negotiations? But he said, no, nothing has changed. Um, and somebody else asked how much influence Lamar has when it comes to bringing in players. And Eric DaCosta said, I'm all ears, said veterans will come in and talk to him whenever they have suggestions. And he said it's good to listen to people and consider other ways of doing things. And he said he appreciates the opinions of other players and coaches. And I appreciated that because that's true. That's true. In my opinion, any great leader, um, they are willing to listen to the people uh, that follow them. Uh, because a great leader, they, they may have a great plan in place, but sometimes things happen. Sometimes things change. So it's nice to get input from people that follow that follow that leader uh, because they have some great suggestions as well. So shout out to EDC with that one. Um, <clears throat> somebody asked, are you comfortable with the pass rush you have? <laughs> he said it's always a priority to improve the pass rush. He said Tyus was doing good before the injury. And yeah, he had he was doing better as the year went on. Um, he said, away did good and said, we'll, we'll be able to pick a good pass rusher since we're picking in between 14 to 20. So, again, he put it out there again that he's willing to move in the draft. So, shout out to EDC again. He, he, he dropping them little hints to people like, hey, talk to me. I'm ready. Um, Ronnie Stanley, he, uh, they asked about him again and asked if he was able to get. I had never heard of this before. He, uh, somebody asked if he was able to get disability insurance with him having just got paid and then he got hurt. Uh, but Eric said, he said, we, we don't talk about the specific contract details like that. And he said that we'll do whatever we can do to protect the club, but we do what we can to protect the player, too. But he let it be known, like, hey, <laughs> we protecting the Ravens first <laughs> and then the player after. Um, as far as Calais Campbell, uh, somebody asked about uh, if, if Eric had talked to him. He said they have conversations and they, they, they'll have more conversations. Um, he said we need to get younger them. So him and Calais, uh, they've talked, but the D-line is something that they have to address uh, this year. Um, somebody also asked him about special teams being number one in the league. Uh, and he said Chris Horton is very important. said he's great. Uh, he's detailed and passionate. He said the only thing that Chris Horton can do, special teams coach, um, is 
beat him in a peloton. I said, okay, well, Eric DaCosta in some shape. Maybe he should have went out there and played some corner for us last year. Because if he, he could get down in a peloton, that means he got some good stamina, he got good energy, and he should have he should have suited up. Anyway, um, Bashadi. Somebody asked, what does Bashadi think about everything? Where, where is his headspace right now? Uh, but he said he doesn't want to talk about their personal conversations. Well, okay, we can understand that. But he said that uh, we're concerned. The only thing they're concerned with and consumed with is how they can get better as a team. How can we protect our players? Is it technology? Is it the way we practice? Said they'll look at everything and own it. Uh, and he said they, they've done a lot of uh, re reviewing, like looking back at everything that they've done, looking back at the good and looking back, looking back at the bad, looking bad at everything. And really assessing it and seeing how they can get better. And that's what anybody has to do. Uh, you have to look at places or, or times when you were successful. Like, okay, how can I capitalize on that? How can I do that again? And you have to look at where you were unsuccessful as well. To see, hey, what did I do wrong? Well, why didn't this work out? So that's, that's something that's, it just has to happen. Uh, they also asked him about Hollywood uh, and what have been what his thoughts were with Hollywood's development. He said, Marquise was my first pick. I love his talent, his personality, like his energy. For his skill set, for what he brings to the table, the fifth-year option looks like a bargain. I got to look up the details of what the fifth-year option, like how much it is. Uh, but anyway, he said, hopefully for this year, he doesn't get as many questions uh, about wide receivers. But he said, here we are, still getting a lot of questions about wide receivers. And he said it in one of those kind of like joking ways, but it wasn't really a joke. But that was that. Uh, he said Hollywood hasn't played his best football, but he said that he's, he would say that about a lot of his guys. Um, he talked about the development of players, how different players develop at different stages. He said as an organ, and this wasn't about Hollywood. This was just, just about players in general because um, somebody had asked him a different question. I forgot exactly what the question was, but he said as an organization, uh, they have to push players to develop as quickly as they can. Um, but so much factors into how a guy plays. Uh, when building a team, one of the worst things you can do is bring in a guy but then someone behind him ends up developing quicker than him. And that can be a, a, a tricky situation, depending on draft status, depending on the contract, because money talks. Um, it, 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 it can make stuff very tricky. But I think it's a good problem to have. Well, kind of. But anyway, um, somebody brought up Anthony Averett, Pat Ricard, Bradley Bozeman. And they said, do you have the cap room to make a good run in keeping your top unrestricted free agents? He said, we do. We can sign anybody we want to sign. But it takes two parties to get a deal done. Uh, said they've done 22 extensions for over two mil a year uh, over the past, I think, three years, he said. But he said that only the Eagles have done more, which is frustrating. But said you can't re-sign everybody. And I think that was just, like, they, they technically can. Um, they, they can sign whoever they want. Because, look, with the cap, you can, you can get it done. If you want somebody, you want to sign somebody, you can get it done. But with this part, I think he was just, um, he just saying, yeah, yeah, we could, we could sign him. Are they going to sign all, all three of these guys? I don't anticipate it. I do not think Anthony Avery comes back. Uh, Pat Ricard, I don't think they'll sign him back initially. I think they could let him test the market uh, and then see what happens after that. But I don't think it's going to be crazy market for a fullback. Um, and for Bradley Bozeman, I think he'll test the market and he'll be gone. I think he's out of there because I... Somebody, and it, usually it's like this all the time, but it's always somebody who will pay more than the Ravens. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but that just is what it is. It's always going to be somebody that will pay more than the Ravens. And Bradley Bozeman, you trying to get some bread, you trying to get paid, okay, go test the market, get your bread, man. Can't never be mad at nobody for getting their bread, so we'll see what happens with that. <clears throat> um, uh, somebody's talked about with John Harbaugh, how he expressed confidence, confidence can't even talk, uh, with Marcus Peters being on a roster next year. And, and EDC said that he loves Marcus Peters, said he talks to him a lot, and he said that he is a Raven. And he's one of those rare guys that have played for other teams, but come in and really change the culture, and he would expect Marcus to be here. Um, and with Marcus Peters, he is one of those guys, like, excuse me, there are some players to where they have played for other teams. They've come from other teams, but it's like, oh, yeah, you, you should have been here a long time ago. And he brought up Anquan Bowden. Uh, he brought up Marcus Peters. He brought up Steve Smith Sr. Um, there was somebody else. I forgot who else he brought up. But he brought up a couple of guys' names, and it was like, oh, yeah. Uh, somebody asked about Jimmy Smith and Sam Cook, what their statuses were, but he said he hadn't talked to those two. Uh, he did talk about Anthony Levine, though, who did officially retire. Um, and he said that Anthony Levine had been thinking about it for like the past two years. 
Uh, and he, but he said that Anthony Levine started his coaching already because they did say when he retired that he would make that transition into coaching right away for the Ravens. So it's like, man, like that's like that's great, man. For Levine, you two-time Super Bowl champion, by the way, got to go out on his own terms. But he retires, and right away he got a job working with the team that you've been playing with for for a long time, and boom, you get to be a scout right away. Like that's that's something right there. Um, he talked about Zach Orr and Anthony Weaver, uh, and he said somebody asked him that or told him that it must be fulfilling when you see players make that transition from playing to coaching. Uh, and he said it's nice to see players do that. And he, he said that sometimes they're shocked at what we as coaches in front office, what we do and how we do it. And when they make the switch from players to coaches, uh, and he talked about he, he gave a shout out to Bill Belichick. Um, he, he said he gave appreciation to him for giving Ozzie Newsom a shot at working in the front office. And obviously, this, this worked out kind of great. Uh, <laughs> he talked about Eric Weddle. Say he ain't surprised at what Eric Weddle did. Being at home, chilling for two years, then come out leading the team in tackles in the NFC Championship. Game. Like, what? Um, but he said that uh, Eric Weddle does everything the right way. And he said that he actually expects him to be a scout for the Ravens one day. Uh, he said he coached uh, his son's team to, to a championship. And he just talked about he He just really loved Eric Weddle. Um, one person asked about the philosophy. Said the philosophy has usually been to keep an eye on what the Steelers do and draft accordingly. Um, but he said that that's changed now uh, and said the Bengals have done a great job at drafting. And, they have, and they've been doing that for a while. I, I've always said, I said it for years, the Bengals always have these super talented teams, always. But just they, there seemed to be a lack of leadership from the top. Because they've always had guys that could ball, man. Always. They've always been loaded with wide receivers. Always had good running backs. Uh, the quarterbacks, they've been straight. Obviously, Joe Burrow doing his thing. Andy Dolan was straight. He was straight. Um, but it's just, it's been something that had been missing, like, off the field. But they seem to have, I mean, they obviously got it right now. They're in the Super Bowl. So, um, they asked him about the safety position. Where, where do you feel like you are? At safety and how do you how would you feel if a playmaker came available? What he talked about Brandon Stevens and having a great year. He brought up how he was a running back three years ago. Then the year before last, how he was a cornerback and played a little bit of safety. Uh, he, he said that we expect him to make a jump, um, but he also talked about how their inability to create turnovers was an issue. Said he wants more picks, more forced fumbles, and for the Ravens defense to be more disruptive. And yes, I think we would all agree with that one. Uh, he said it was his fault that they just didn't have enough corners or enough guys. Uh, he said, when you lose the quality of players, it takes a toll. Uh, he said, going into the season, it looked like they had a lot of depth and said they had a lot of players that they cut that were in training camp, but they ended up playing uh, on other teams. Also talked about, speaking of safety, he also talked about the Earl Thomas situation, said they haven't really heard anything about that, said it's ongoing. Uh, he said, maybe this year they'll have something to say, but as far as right now, nothing. Um... He also talked about the draft. They asked him if the draft is going to be remote, if he's going to do it from home, or if they're going to do it from the facility. And he's, uh, yeah, he ain't doing it from home no more. Because he said his boys, his sons, they were playing Fortnite and they knocked out the Wi-Fi. So he said he ain't going through that again. Um, he also talked about uh, John Harbaugh's extension, uh, his contract extension. He said that's not something that he's involved in or that he would talk about, but he said there isn't a better head coach in the league. Said he couldn't imagine any situation where he wouldn't want to be with John Harbaugh for years to come. Moving on, he also talked about J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards returning from injury and said we are optimistic, but there's always going to be an unknown when it comes to injuries and how guys respond and get back. And he said they will assess all of that in free agency and in the draft. So Eric DaCosta had a lot to say. Um, and he addressed he addressed the, the things that we were thinking about the most, obviously, uh, probably number one being Lamar Jackson and his contract status. Um, so, again, just the biggest thing that I took away from this press conference was with Lamar Jackson's contract status that he's really trying to put it on Lamar. Like, hey, Lamar, it's it's on you. It ain't on me. <laughs> I'm ready, baby. It's on you. Uh, so we'll see what happens next. I don't right now. I don't envision anything, um, a contract happening this off season. Uh, Eric DeCosta talked about how they could they could work with that. The I think it's twenty two point something million or twenty three mil 
that Lamar's cap hit, obviously they would want that to be lower. Obviously. Um, but if it's not, if Lamar don't want to do a deal yet, okay. But based off of what Eric DaCosta said, and just based off of the way he said it, to me, it just it, it just seems like Lamar is going to want to stay and stay right where he is. I, okay, I play on the fifth year option. All right, cool, no problem. I'm getting about twenty three mil. Okay, cool. I'm straight. And I know somebody um somebody brought up in the comment section yesterday that oh that the Ravens they have all the leverage because they could franchise tag Lamar Jackson the following year. They could franchise tag him again. I said yeah, that's true. Uh, they could do those things. They certainly could. And the only bad thing about the franchise tag is that it's not a long-term deal. So you have all this commitment for just one year. Um, but if they did that, then I feel like Lamar would still have leverage because he, he would still get paid a lot of money. The average of the top five salaries of the top five uh, quarterbacks, what they're getting paid in the league. So he would be getting a lot of bread for those one or two years if they franchise tagged him. But then at the same time, that would eat up so much of their salary cap. So you really think Ravens would want to do that? Like, think about that. Like, Ravens always tight to the cap as is. So if they put the franchise tag on a quarterback, ooh, ooh yikes. <laughs> that would be something. And that, so again, I, I think, I still think Lamar, he has more leverage uh, in this whole thing than the Ravens do. Uh, but it's going to be an interesting situation with the whole contract talks, how these whole things play out um, and how it goes down. Now, one with Marcus Peters, that was something that was interesting as well. And again, he spoke about Marcus Peters like he does expect him to be on the team um, now. But and really with Marcus Peters, with Lamar Jackson, when he talked about Pat Ricard, Bradley Bozeman, Anthony Averett, uh, when he spoke about Calais Campbell, when he spoke about Jimmy Smith, Sam Cook. When he speaks about everybody and everything, when it comes to people being here, people, not whatever. Or at what, some that I said it before with the other press conferences. Well, more so John Harbaugh's with, with Mike McDonald. We got to see in order to really assess if everything that he's talking about comes to fruition. But um, with these press conferences, more so with John Harbaugh and Eric DaCosta, they can say anything up there. They have plenty of experience with public speaking, obviously. Um, they got a good talk game. They got a great talk game. But it's now it's about the follow-up. It's about the follow-up. So we, we can't get hung up, too hung up on what they said. Oh, they said this is going to happen. Okay, so I expect that to happen. Oh, they said this is going to happen. Okay, so I expect that. Oh, they said this is going to happen. Okay, so that's going to go. To you can think that it's going to happen, but it still has to actually happen. So, and again, action speaks so much louder than words do. So, we'll see how it goes. I love y'all so much. I appreciate y'all so much. Um, and we out. See y'all soon.